Hi, Susan here, going to show you how to do these little spooky houses. Um, we're going to show you uh, the gradients. I've got two different color choices that I've done in this video, uh, but you can pretty much choose whatever colors you want. Here's the uh, Liquitex white gesso that I use to prime my rocks. It gives a nice surface to paint on and I apply it with a nice smooth syn synthetic brush. Here are the sponges that I like to use. Uh, and you can also use one of these type of brushes too. Or sponges. <laughs> Now, let's see. So here are my rocks. I have uh, taped the back to create a nice crisp line. And this way I'm not going to get paint all over the back because I just want the back to be sort of natural. And I've got a little trick that I don't know where I picked it up along the way. Um, but uh, you know if you've ever taped off a rock and then it bleeds underneath. So it really defeats the whole purpose of taping it. So what I use is uh, I get some Mod Podge and it doesn't really matter if it's matte or glossy but it's the point is it's just going to um, cover over the tape here. Now you see I'm just putting the Mod over here and I'm going to also cover the rocks so that if there are any little bumps it will just smooth them out a little bit. Uh, and make a nice surface to put my gesso on. And yeah, sorry this video, I am going to speed things up because it is um, pretty pretty uh, basic on how to, you know, put on a base coat and, and whatnot. So I don't need to do this in real time. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. These are almost dry. I ended up putting a, a little bit extra on this one because the rock was pretty dark. This one was a little lighter, but very bumpy. So we'll see how it turns out. Sorry, a little out of breath, running around chasing a kitten and a cat. <laughs> so they are, well, the older cat isn't overly happy with the younger cat. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I did have some questions about uh, the backgrounds that I've been doing lately on these. So this is a, it's an orange or yellowy orange, red and a violet to get that blend. <clears throat> I've done Oh, this is such a big rock. This blend was fun. I like this one. I think it was these ones. These are so flat. So this is a fluorescent pink, the top. And a cadmium orange, which is one of my favorite oranges. This is practically empty. And then a yellow at the bottom, cadmium yellow medium. So that gets that really nice, bright background. Oh, my other favorite colors I like are the teal, cobalt teal with the green. This is, um, oh, my fingers aren't working today. So the yellow green. And I put a bit of white in there and did sort of more of a mush, like a putting a piece of saran wrap over it and then just sort of mushing it together to get some texture. But these these are fun for doing these little silhouettes. Um, this is a transparent foil, so you can actually see through the dress to see the green background. Yeah, fun. So I was thinking, because I've done a lot of these ones, which I'll probably do some more. I've got some lined up to do. I thought I would try one I haven't done, which is an interesting color 
for possibly Halloween <clears throat> would be this um, Cadmian Primrose. It's sort of a brighter, more stark yellow with the yellow green and then uh, Phaleo Blue in green shade. It just means like you really don't really see the green unless you dilute it down. Um, <clears throat> so those three I'm going to try. Oops. Okay, you can use like a little pie plate or, or sorry, a paper plate and just put some saran wrap over it or whatever you like to use. Um, I'm just using one of these and I put my press and seal over top because then it's nice and easy for cleanup. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just going to put a little bit of this in here. Well, it's more than a little bit, but I'll be using it all up. It's the one thing with these paints that they, uh, having the wide brim it does make it a little harder to get out. And now you know why I'm wearing gloves today. <laughs> it's not the cleanest of uh, techniques. And these golden fluid, or golden um, so flat paints are so pigmented that it, it really does take quite a bit of effort to wash it off my skin. So I do have an old set here so you can see. <laughs> I can be use these gloves a fair amount. And let's see if I have a little better luck with my green here. Real life painting. All right, try this a little bit better. This one's gotten a little thicker, so that's good. There. And I'm only, I'm using every other well just in case uh, it spills over. throat's so dry today. Okay, I'm going to start with the lighter color, but really there is no really right or wrong way to do this. And uh, so I'm just going to dive in. And you can push the paint into your little brush for when you start blending just by dabbing it. I like these ones. Um, they're I think I got them at the dollar store, so I can wash them a few times and reuse them. And then eventually they they conk out. I'm not sure how this blend is gonna look. I thought I would just experiment here today. Now that sort of bumpy eggshell look, we you can use different kind of brushes or sponges and it it lessens that. I have Martha Stewart ones that you know are really nice, but for backgrounds, I just use these because they're cheap. And I'm just gonna do this and try not to touch the yellow at first. It's kind of a neat, neat green. I like this one. It almost looks a little bit eastery. I don't know. We'll see what happens when I get that dark color in. Um, I think I'll, I'll do that blend now. Okay. So um, this is full of green. So once I start going into the yellow, they're going to start mixing a bit. So as long as you try and stay within, like keep keep that yellow on the top all the time. Don't rotate your brush. And then you just gradually bring it up. There, it was as simple as that. I could go a little bit further if you really want to work it. And then 
same with the yellow try try not to you can bring the yellow back down again and and just start pressing lighter there just really press really light if you have too much product on your sponge you can just get your your just blot it off and you can see I've done that this is dry so it's not gonna cross cross over now let's see what happens with this blue first time here I haven't done this one so let's see my new kitten has long hair so I'm starting to see see that in my art here dark to be on the bottom the most. You can see how nicely that's covering. All right, let's see what happens here. And go back and forth a little bit. Not showing up on the video as well as it looks in person. It looks good. Okay, now. a lot of just going back and forth and just trying to bring that color up and down at the same time. And then I can also get a completely dry sponge and start just sort of pushing it in a little harder and blending it. Getting quite a line there, so I may still have to add some light green. We'll see here. It's kind of a neat, neat blend. you work at it um, it either will turn into mud <laughs> or you'll get a really nice fade so I'm almost at the point where I like it just as it is right now a little bit of dark blues come off if you find your paint is starting to come off uh, just let it dry and then go back to it I'm wearing my painting shirt so I don't get paint all over my new, oops, a little bit light there. So, I don't know, let's see how much I end up getting on me. Just like that, you go, oh, I think 
I don't like that little green spot there, so I'm just gonna cover it up. Oh, look at that. What a pain. What a pain in the butt. Okay, I like that. So, of course, I just got my glove into it and it lifted the color a little bit there. So I'll just, just go in lightly and darken that up. Sorry, if you can't hear me, I'll try and speak louder. I think I'm losing my voice today. All right, so I'll carry on doing some more rocks here. That's the, the way to do that. All right. Here's some of my rocks I did without using tape and you can see I got lots of paint on them. So I'm just using my black Posca markers to clean up the whole edge and uh, as I'm making these for uh, my kindness rocks uh, that I'll be hiding in my community, I want to be able to write on the back um, the community I'm part of. Uh, it's Souk to Sydney Rock Hunt because I'm in Victoria, BC, Canada. And uh, we go from Souk to Sydney. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I find that Posca works really great, but you could use regular paint as well. So at first here I thought I would use my white chalk pencil, but uh, it just didn't show up for the tutorial. So I'm going to switch over to a pencil here so you can at least see the image. These little houses are very rustic. They're not meant to be perfect lines. Um, so uh, you're just gonna sketch in, you know, uh, I like to start from the top so that I'm, I know where I want the roof line to end. Uh, and then I work my way down, but it does, doesn't really matter. You can find um, these funny little houses uh, on the internet just by searching spooky house silhouette and that'll give you some ideas on what to use for shapes um, what you could add to them um, I'm kind of just um, you know I have an, uh, an idea of what I want to do but mostly just making it up <laughs> as I go along um, and you know always remember that it's going to be all pretty much blacked out except for like where I put the windows and, and things you don't have to do curly um, edges, uh, you know, just make it up as you go along. It's it's kind of fun and freeing. It reminds me of being a, a young child and making things. Uh, you're not overthinking it. And it can be, you know, make it messy. It doesn't have to be uh, perfect unless you want to make yours that way. It's just sort of meant to be fun and free. And, uh, you know, it's the, all in the details, so I'm just adding a little weather vine vein at the top. Um, you can do some funny little smokestacks, um, different shapes of windows. Um, some windows will have boards on them falling off, and some will be regular windows. Yeah, so just have fun with it. You know, find you can find neat inspiration online for sure. Different kinds of doorways. Uh, this one I'm going to have the door open. Yeah, so watch along. And, uh, you know, again, like I said, these aren't 
aren't going to be major works of art. They're just fun little free pieces. <laughs> For this part, we're going to add a highlight and you just need a gold paint of some sort or you could even use sparkles, uh, whatever you have on hand, um, using a fine lining brush. And uh, this is actually a, like a gold ink, so it can be uh, a little more transparent, um, which is nice for adding highlights. So I just kind of 
touch over um, sort of the outlines and, and details that I want to sort of stand out, like, you know, putting a frame around the windows and um, the little f fencing around. I'll highlight those and anything that I want to just add a bit of detail. And it's like I said before, it's, you know, just be free with the brush. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect circles and um, it's just the style that this is. It's a, just a little more free. <laughs> yeah, I really like how these turn out. <laughs> 